Hey guys, and welcome back to a very, very interesting video that I have for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at a prototype version of the Macintosh System Software 1. Now, just to give you guys a brief backstory about how that uh, these diskette images got released, basically a, a few years back, somebody got their hands on a rare Macintosh prototype that actually used the five and a quarter inch floppy drive rather than the three and a half inch one that the original Macintosh shipped with. So it was uh, at the time when Apple was experimenting with a five and a quarter inch drive to use in the Macintosh. And eventually after posting about it online a lot, he eventually released two diskette images that came with that prototype Mac and they actually contain a prototype um, work in progress version of the Macintosh system software. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this prototype software and seeing how it compares to the uh, official system software that, you know, obviously shipped with the Macintosh. So here we are booted into one of the diskettes. There were two different diskettes that uh, I was able to find. One of them is with Mac Paint on it, and this one here has Mac Write. And right off the bat, you can see that it looks uh, fairly different. I mean, the whole menu bar interface and, and you know the icons and all that look very similar to the final release. But you'll notice a few things that were totally changed. For one, the Apple logo up here is just an at symbol, which I assume is just a placeholder for uh, the Apple logo that was going to go there in the final version. These window, uh, like these window titles, look uh, a little bit different. So yeah, there's a lot of like placeholder things. And there's all there's also a lot of inside jokes between the Macintosh developers, which is you know pretty funny. We're going to be taking a look at those. So let's just go ahead and go up to the soon-to-be Apple menu up here, and you can see that when we open it up, you have your same shortcuts to launch all of your different applications, but. There's also a lot of uh, debugging tools in here as well. You can see like we have the mem window, heap doctor, pat edit. So there's a lot of things that uh, the, the software developers used to debug um, you know, issues that they were having with the software. And you can see down here at the bottom, we actually have the date stamp finder 1.7. August 15th, 1983. So this is about five or so months before the official release date of um, the Macintosh and Macintosh System 1. So um, yeah, so that is that is pretty neat. So well, when we first booted in, you can see that it opened up with this window called Mac stuff. And there's all of these, you know, different documents in here and, you know, some of these files right here. And let's just go ahead and, uh, and just open up some of these. So we'll go ahead and just open up this bigger doc right here. And it opens up in a program called Mac Author, which eventually would become Mac Write. And basically what this is, I assume what they were trying to test here is just how long that you can make a document before that you start to experience problems. So you can see that this is just a bunch of text copied and pasted over and over again. And very interestingly up here at the, at the top, this bar where you have like your text options to like make it, okay, I want it to be double spaced or, you know, single spaced or you know, centered and all that, they actually have it to where when you scroll down, it actually just goes away entirely. And, and we just have all of this, uh, all of the text here. So that was something I assume, you know, that they were still working out at the time. But um, when we go up here, you see that, yeah, you see, we get a lot of system errors. And this is primarily, I believe I, I am running this in an emulator. I have read online that this software did work better on like real hardware. Let's go ahead and uh, open up this text document over here. This document, I've I've kind of looked at some of this stuff before that I started recording. This is apparently a review for a guy named John Kelly in, in summer of 1983, and they list his uh, his accomplishments and missed goals, strong areas. I don't know if this was like a joke or if it was um, they were testing like uh, employee evaluation something on the Mac. I mean, I don't know what the purpose, I mean, honestly, the only people that probably know what these documents really, like what the intention of it was, would be the Mac developers themselves. I don't know if any of them are gonna be watching this video, but you know, yeah, so this is uh, another test document. And there's, as I said, there's a lot of inside jokes between the uh, the Apple developers. So when I go ahead and uh, and quit out of this, which you'll see immediately when I quit, that uh, Mini V Mac throws up this message saying that there's an abnormal situation, so we have to restart it here and boot back into it. So that that happens a lot. 
Uh, in this freak out document right here, you're going to see there's a lot of uh, just ramblings from the Mac developers. And there's also some very obscene text. And it says, this is a test of the Macintosh. The I is like intercapitalized of the Macintosh word processor. As you may know, it was recently overhauled to make it work better. So yeah, we, we've got that. These actually, I haven't taken a look at. We'll go ahead and, and open this up. So so what's the hap? So well, it's, it's approximately 7.30 a.m. They were probably working really late that night. And I'm frustrated from trying to call you. Here I have an elaborate dialogue all set up from the Apple phones all turn busy, then your home phone to message the number you received. So this is like a letter to somebody, I guess. I don't know. Dear Veronica, September 14th, 1983. And here's another part of that document, RS2, which is a extension of the previous document. He talks about Central America. I mean, you guys can pause the video if you really want to read this whole thing, but... So, something that I find pretty hilarious is when you open up, like, one of these files that the finder can't open, It'll come up with this, with this window right here that says Steve says, and you have like a like a um, little icon of Steve Jobs, and he says, I don't know how to open this file. Please set the file type and its creator for an application type as a P P L, and the creator is its own signature. So again, another like developer inside joke thing going on here. But I, I mean, this is basically like an error message, but it uh, adds like this you know Steve Jobs deal going on over here so that's so that is uh some of the stuff inside of this mac stuff so we'll go ahead and uh, close out of this mac stuff um floppy diskette and anonymous i don't know what this is but you you will notice that the floppy disk icons here are the three and a half inch ones even though that this was running on a uh on a twiggy mac so on a five and a quarter inch drive so i was reading online as well that this may have been one of the last prototype uh, software releases that was made for the Twiggy Mac because at this time I assume Apple had made the decision to move to the three and a quarter inch, or sorry, the three and a half inch drive, and uh, they, you know, indicated that with these icons here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these applications. So some of these apps like the calculator honestly look very similar if not identical to the final release so there may have been like some under the hood changes they had to do but overall i mean it functions like you would expect it to in the final release of the mac os but there are a lot of things like um like the heap doctor and the memory window and so these are literally just the bugging tools that's what their intention is so they were never released to the public so you know that gives you some uh, some debug information keyboard this is like a keyboard test to where <laughs> i'm sorry but renaming must be done by using the interim menu oh so when you start to type it just comes up with that with that dialog box but it's it's basically to test your keyboard so if you notice this like the split second before that the that the steve says box comes up when i press a key you'll see that it will oh, i guess i can tell it there so it's basically just to test like the keyboard layout so I, I guess when you type, yeah, when you type anywhere on the desktop, it just comes up with that because they did have uh, all of like the rename and the move options up in this interim menu up here. So in this menu is where you have options to rename, remove, set icons, set file info. There's also this news box here, which uh, gives you some more like basically like a change log between this finder version and the previous version. So this is from uh, from like one of the developers, Bruce here. And he just gives you like some information about, hey, you know, this is what's changed. It's faster. It's going to, uh, you know, continue to, or he's he's going to continue to work on making it faster. So, yeah. Also, you cannot move an icon around because it just comes up with this saying, "I'm sorry, but dragging objects on the desk has been temporarily disabled pending a major rewrite." So, if we wanted to, like, with this empty folder here, if we want to change the icon we can change it to you know there's all these different icons in here uh so we can make it you know if we, if we want to make it like the steve jobs icon we can do that and then it immediately throws up an error you can see that the icon did change but it totally froze there so we'll go ahead and reset it again um but let, let's go ahead and move on to the mac paint diskette and see what's on that so we're gonna go ahead and drag that in here so we have that same Mac stuff window open up here with all of the files in it. And there's actually different files in here than what was on Mac, right? So we don't have any of those text documents. We have um, some paint or like some Mac paint documents. We also have these very interesting icons here. 
um, which probably indicate how sleep deprived that all of the software developers were because the Mac developers worked like 90 hours a week sometimes. So they were probably pretty sleep deprived. So this may be, uh, again, like another inside joke between them. Um, kind of, you know, like this uh, zombie, you know, half asleep icon. And again, when you open these up, it comes up with that same Steve Says box. And uh, the full Mac Paint program is in here. So uh, when it, you know, when you open it up, it has honestly looks kind of like Microsoft Paint. I don't know, like it literally, this is a very similar layout like to MS Paint in Windows 3.1. Totally reminds me of that. And it says Mac Paint by Bill Atkinson, who was one of the software developers. And it immediately says, get what document? And you would just type it in and you would click on get old, I guess. So again, you, you like you have to hard key it in. So there's like no file browser, but let's just go ahead and make a new document here. Oh, we got to type the name of the document. There's this, <laughs> there's another icon there. Um, let's just name this test. I don't know if it's actually gonna let us make a new document. Oh, it will, cool. So you notice right away that the Apple logo is here. So it has replaced the at sign. And when we do this, we still get all of those, um, all of those, you know, programs uh, in here, but we also get this Mac Paint by Bill Atkinson version 0 0.5, copyright 1983. So kind of the same thing as with the Finder version from just the desktop, but it's specifically for Mac Paint. So you know we can go in here and you know draw whatever we want. We can go ahead and make the whole screen painted. Um, you know it's obviously only black and white, but we can choose different shades of black and white. So we can make it like you know, like this shade if we want to, you know, this like little pattern here. So that's pretty neat. We can draw shapes. So when we go to the file menu here, we got save and continue, revert to save. So, you know, like your regular save options, edits, undo and paste and aids. Uh, so we have like a grid, um, fat bits, show page, textile, brush shape, edit pattern. So brush shape, I can change the shape of the brush. So if I want it to be like you know, a, a really small square, which doesn't, I guess I gotta go to the brush. Yeah, so now it's a really small square, or I can make it a really big circle, there you go. Um, text style, we can, so it will come up with this, gives you a preview of the font, so if I wanna make it like Helvetica or Times New Roman, which is shortened to Times Roman, we can change the font size, we can make it bold, italic, underline, outline, or shadow, um, we can make it all of these things and we can align it to the left, the right, or the center. So let's go ahead and do that and then let's go to the text tool here and type in Mac Paint. <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. Oh, I was going to press Control A and you can see that that's not how the, that's how the Mac works. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, we got like the lasso tool as well, so that's neat. Wow, they, they had like a lasso tool in here, that's pretty neat. So yeah, that is a uh, that's that that's Mac Paint, a, a really early version of it. We'll go ahead and quit out of this, and we'll go ahead and yeah, let's save it. And that, now it's going to give us a system error, and we have to restart. So let's go ahead and boot back up into here. Um, so we also have some drawings from the developers and stuff, and you know you know like some bitmap files. So this explosive one here. This is pretty cool. It's like a check here. So it says uh, July FY eighty three results something and it's got yeah like a drawing I don't know if they drew this themselves or if they like imported this from something else but again when we restart it's so annoying that we have to do this every single time but so, th so that was when we got bomb here which is a I guess a more completed version of that same document you've got dots so okay so this is actually the drawing of the like the Macintosh art style where like this would be on the box and stuff so that's pretty neat I don't know if they drew this in here, but it kind of looks like they did. So yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, let's go open a mousey. So this is, uh, again, I mean, this is so cool, but I don't know if this is a drawing of, like by the developers or if they imported this from something else, but this looks really cool. So this is like a, a drawing of, uh, of the Macintosh mouse. Um, I guess giving like a graphic on, on like how to use it I guess so that's pretty neat so right clicking obviously isn't a thing because the Mac mouse only had one button but the get info panel that's even like Mac OS like the modern Mac OS I was about to say Mac OS 10 but they changed the name back to Mac OS but even the um like the get info panel is in this super early prototype version so if you go to file and get info It'll come up with this window right here saying information about Mac stuff. Mac stuff is a disk, 
which is in the internal drive and it tells you the size of it it tells you the type which is sony disc cartridge which sony was um is who apple was working with to get the three and a half inch drive so it just flat out tells you sony disc cartridge and then user comment this is the user comment is edible using the edit menu and the mouse selection but yeah on this disc as well you also can't move things around and i think you can still rename stuff yeah so if i want to rename empty folder to cool folder and hit ok and it, and it changed it doesn't crash so that's good uh, i got the same news box i think this one might actually be a little different so we'll go ahead and hit done there set icon is still the same thing debug window still comes up with this and which when you actually like move the mouse and, and when you click somewhere it, it'll just you know spit out a bunch of information in there telling you like what you did click it tells you like like the exact point on the screen at where that you clicked so that's cool. There's also a desktop pattern editor, and that's this pat edit right here, which this just lets you uh, change the pattern. So I can just, you, you can actually like draw your own pattern basically, and then just set it, and there you go. All the icons went away for some reason. So yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it for this desktop pattern editor. There, there were no like desktop backgrounds or anything, but I mean, this was like the best that you got. I mean, because this, this was again like a black and white display, so there were no like editing your desktop background. But you can see it's definitely very screwed up because the icons just disappeared. I can still open them though. But now, see, this might be something with the emulator. I'm not 100% sure though because I haven't tested this on real hardware because I don't have like a Twiggy Mac prototype. Although I've heard it is possible to copy the contents of the image here, of the floppy drive image, to an actual three and a half inch drive and put it into a vintage Mac. And I think you do have to change the ROM. There's a few videos of people actually getting it to work, but that would be a really involved video for us trying to get this to work on real hardware. So that. I may decide to do that eventually, but honestly, just for now, that's going to go ahead and uh, and wrap it up for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this look at this vintage prototype Macintosh software of uh, Macintosh System One. Honestly, I think that you know this is pretty cool. Hopefully, you know you guys do as well. But honestly, that is going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below if you want to see more videos like this in the near future. And also, be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this Macintosh prototype system software. I'd you know, love to know what you guys have to say. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.